Everyone remembers the case of the so-called Central Park Karen, Amy Cooper, who decided that when a black man told her she has to comply with the law and put her mangy mutt on its leash, while she was busy arguing with them, she said she was going to call the police and tell them that there was a black man threatening her life. Well, of course, what happened was because she did this while he was videotaping her and posted that online, she wound up suffering the rightful consequences, at least in a social sense, the rightful consequences of her racist threats. But the problem was, as egregious as her behavior was, what was even more egregious was the behavior of the victim, Christian Cooper. Now, the thing to remember about Mr. Cooper is he happens to consider himself to be LGBT first, and he considers his race to be just an incidental factor. And whenever you have somebody who has that kind of mentality, the intersectional mentality, well, they don't really understand the idea of being racially threatened because they're trying to escape their race. And as far as they're concerned, if they just pretend that they're not black, well, they can wish the rest of the world to play along. Mr. Cooper decided he was not going to double down, but he would triple down on his delusion. He went so far as to write an opinion piece in the Washington Post, no less, telling the world that he was not going to aid in the investigation of the woman who tried to have him killed. And just to make sure that everybody else got the point, he started running around telling the white media that he was disturbed at the fact that Amy Cooper was receiving so much hate and that she had lost her job. That made him uncomfortable. It made him uncomfortable that the person who threatened his life was suffering the rightful consequences of her actions. He never bothered to ask, gee, why was her employer so quick to have her fired? Did she perhaps have a long track record of this kind of erratic and crazy behavior on her job? He didn't bother to ask any questions because whenever you got a black person who was apologizing for experiencing racism like Barack Obama and others. Whenever you got a black person who's bending over backwards to make excuses for white supremacists who exhibit racist behavior towards them, that's a black person who's looking for a white audience. That's who it is that they're actually trying to impress. And of course, Mr. Cooper, I'm sure that he's thinking that by forgiving, quote unquote, forgiving this racist harlot, that apparently that would hopefully improve his chances in the local dating scene. And we've seen this on so many occasions. After Dylan Roof went into a black church and killed a bunch of black grandmothers, you had some of these shea butter bootlicks. We're talking about the swirler morons who were running around saying that that shouldn't stop any black woman who decides she wants a zaddy. D by the way, don't ask how zaddy feels about the Charleston church massacre. By the way, don't ask how he feels about Dylan Roof. You might not like the answer. But this is the consistent pattern that those who are trying to be intersectionalists have to go through. You have to ignore the fact that there are people trying to have you killed and just overlook that and hopefully they don't get lucky today. But while Christian Cooper was deciding that he was going to make excuses for the woman who threatened his life and tried to make an attempt on his life, while he was busy saying that he was uncomfortable that she was receiving so much hate and losing her job, she was planning what her follow-up was going to be. The crooked racist DA of Manhattan, Cy Vance, who, by the way, we need to remind everyone, refused to prosecute Harvey Weinstein a few years back. It wasn't until the social pressure became too much in 2017 that he was forced to. But as long as he thought he could get away with it, he wasn't about to prosecute Harvey Weinstein. Well, apparently Cy Vance decided here's another white person he didn't want to prosecute. But it became a lot easier. He had the necessary cover not to prosecute Amy Cooper because you had Christian Cooper saying all this dumb stuff. Oh no, make no mistake. Obviously, Cy Vance didn't want to prosecute. But if Christian Cooper had been out there banging the drum every day, making it clear that he was keeping the pressure on that bastard, you think it would have been so easy for him to decide to can this particular prosecution? No, you had Christian Cooper thinking he was being cute. Because apparently what he thought was, like a lot of these idiots, that this white woman's going to ask him to give her a hug. You know, like the murder of Botham John did with his brother on the stand, no less. So again, you got these Negroes trying to find some way to get white supremacist approval. And what did Christian Cooper get for his shameless bootlicking and self-immolation? What did he get for humiliating himself like that? What he got was the very woman who tried to take his life 
is now slandering him and defaming him in public. Amy Cooper has filed a lawsuit against her former employer, claiming that she was fired only because of her race and gender. Well, she doesn't seem to have learned much from that racial sensitivity class that she was made to attend. Remember that? Oh, the DA was so happy. Well, we're not going to prosecute because she took a couple of racial sensitivity courses that we told her to take. And we feel that she suffered enough. And as soon as the DA says, we're going to have the charges dismissed, we're not going forward with the prosecution. See, it wasn't the judge who threw out the case. It was Cy Vance who said, we're going to file a motion to have the case dismissed because we think she's, this white woman suffered enough. As soon as they did, that was the first thing Amy Cooper go, goes and does. She's filing a lawsuit saying, I was discriminated against because of my race and gender. Oh yeah, she sure learned a lot now, didn't she? But it was what she says in her lawsuit regarding the idiotic Christian Cooper that's the most egregious. Her lawsuit says that Christian Cooper had a history of confronting dog owners and that it was his practice and intent to cause dog owners to be fearful for their safety. She ain't doubling down on the bullcrap she said last year. She's tripling down on it. Oh yeah, those racial sensitivity classes sure worked wonders for her, huh? Oh, she's learned not to be spreading racist nonsense about black men being dangerous or you should be scared of black men. She says, oh, to hell with that. I'm going to put this in the public's face. This is obviously a troll lawsuit, but under white supremacy, you understand that there's a lot of them who are looking to show that their racism and their anti-black bigotry, that they're going to be putting it on full display. The more blatant. The more shameless, the more in your face, the better. So don't be surprised when you have some judge who goes, you know what, I think there's merit to this case. Because that's the entire point. It's supposed to be, as I've taught you and told you so many times, it's supposed to be blatant. That's the entire point of doing it. So Christian Cooper, who was telling everybody that Amy Cooper had learned her lesson and he was going to be showing her so much consideration, oh, how uncomfortable and hasn't she suffered enough? She's gone and said the exact same garbage, only she's doing it louder this time. She's putting it in writing this time. The same racist nonsense she was saying last year, she's putting it in writing. And she's telling everybody he's to blame for this. I'm blaming him and I'm blaming him in front of everybody. He's to blame. Christian Cooper, why? That bastard, he made me a racist. He, he's responsible. He has a history of confronting white people, I mean, uh, dog owners, over breaking the law, I mean, uh, their animals being off a leash, which, by the way, is a violation of law. In New York State and New York City, that's a violation of the law. And it was his intent to make people afraid. He wants them to be, he intended to intimidate them. Naturally, Christian Cooper had no comment. Uh, yeah, because how the world does he say to everybody, you know what, I really am an idiot. I really am stupid. I came down with the last drop of rain. I just fell off the turnip truck. I had, I had the honor of being the dumbest kid on the short bus. See, this is what happens when you decide that you're not going to punish people who need to be punished. When you decide that you're going to play footsie with the white supremacists, this is what you get. I wonder how many dates for his little act of self-humiliation that he did. Letting a white supremacist off the hook, I wonder how many hookups he got for that. Oh, and by the way, she says that the reason that I was fired is because no investigation was done. The damn incident was caught on video. That's that's pretty much it right there. Not to mention, given her behavior, it's pretty obvious. This is probably how she's acting on the job, too. So her employer, they didn't need a reason to fire her. They just needed an opportunity. But she's saying that there would have been an investigation done if I wasn't a white woman. Imagine that all you black feminists out there, here's your sisterhood right here. This is the feminism that you've been fighting for. This white woman, notice how she's not saying, she, all of a sudden, apparently, she considers herself to be no different than a white man. Oh, I thought being a woman made her a minority. I thought that being a woman made her somehow oppressed. She's making it very clear, I was considered no different than a white man. And just for the record, it needs to be repeated 
Amy Cooper has made political donations to Barack Obama, Pete Buttigieg, and John Kerry, among others. She voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. Those white supremacist female Democrats gotta stick together, don't you know? And Amy Cooper is very typical of your white liberal, claiming that, oh, I shouldn't be called a racist while I'm doing the most racist stuff imaginable. This is Amy Cooper, the exact same white supremacy that the MAGA supporters are trying to defend. Here's your white liberal in New York City, no less. And here she is, sounding no different than any other white supremacist Karen that you find in Florida, Texas, Louisiana, or anywhere else. So what does that tell you? See, this idea that there's some sort of white supremacists only on the right. No, they're on the right and on the left. They're D Republican and Democrat. When it comes to black people, there is no such thing as white Republican, white liberal. They don't draw those distinctions. They want black people to do that, but they don't draw those distinctions. Amy Cooper appealed to the exact same white privilege and the exact same whiteness without the idea of being a woman. When she sits here saying that I was discriminated, they would have done an investigation if I wasn't a white woman. You can take the woman right off of that. She's really, everybody understands what she's saying. If I wasn't white, this woman is sitting here supposed to be a white liberal supporting Democrats. And here she is operating straight out of the Emmett Till murder playbook. I am a white woman who is not being protected against the big bad Negro. And what did the black man do to you? He, I was confronted and threatened. He has a history of threatening white women. Don't you know that that's what this nigger did? I was threatened. I was threatened. Now, the point behind all this is it is not some victimless crime when you call yourself making an ass of yourself to protect and run interference for these white supremacists. When you decide that you're going to be playing that, well, I forgive them and well, you know, this happened to me, so I get to say whether or not, no, you do not get to do that. Amy Cooper did not say that it was Christian Cooper, the individual who intimidated her. She said it's a black man. And she is not making her dumb lawsuit on the basis of being an individual. She's doing it on the basis of being white. So when you have the Barack Obamas and when you have the swirler morons and the Christian Coopers and other assorted garbage who decide that they're going to be making excuses for these white supremacists and that they're going to be trying to, to cushion the blow for them. And let me tell you guys to lay off them. You need to lay off of them. That is not being done in a vacuum. The white media takes that narrative of, see, black people don't mind being abused and threatened and they don't mind being oppressed. Why, here's this guy who was egregiously assaulted, had his life threatened by this white supremacist female over here, and he says that he's uncomfortable that she might be punished. They take that and they run with it. You will never see them having any white person who has allegedly been the victim of a black person. You know, all three of them. You can count them on one hand and still have enough fingers left to drive. The white media will never present a white person who has allegedly been the victim of a black person and have them saying, forgive, forgive, and I'm uncomfortable with them being punished. How many of those women that the white media had calling themselves accusing Bill Cosby, did they come up to later and say, you forgive them, right? You forgive them. We're going to stay asking you that until you say yes, you forgive them, right? They didn't do that with them. Instead, it was, how do you feel that that nigger got what he deserved? That's what the questions were instead. No, the white media is going to stay strictly on message and on narrative when it comes to racially pathologizing what the coverage will be. When the victim of the murder is black, when the victim is black, well, somebody better say they forgive the white assailant. Somebody better say they forgive and that this wasn't a crime and let's move on and we don't want anything done. On the other hand, when the accuser is white and the person being accused is black, well, uh, justice was served and that's what we should all just breathe a sigh of relief. And something else that I think needs to be said, I'm sick and tired of every time that there's some incident of racial violence, be it fatal or otherwise, it takes place. We got to stop it with black people. And I'm sending this to black women in particular, because I see a lot of black women who are the most egregious violators of this norm out there. 
Sisters, you're going to have to stop it with this garbage about, oh, so-and-so was killed or so-and-so was brutalized, and then you're sitting here telling everybody how you feel and how sad it is, and you got these stupid emojis crying and such. That's somebody trying to get attention for themselves. It's obvious, it's sickening, and it's going to stop. Sisters, it's time out for all of this trying to get attention for yourselves because some black person gets harmed. You think this is the time to show, oh, I'm going to put up, I'm going to tell people that I'm hurting, that I'm crying about it. No, I was so sad about it. That's you trying to get attention for yourself. Whenever some anti-black attack takes place, the only response should be one thing and one thing only. Punishment for the assailant. That's it. If you're giving any other response or any other comment other than that, then you are out of order. You are out of line and you better get back in line. Whenever one of these anti-black attacks takes place, you are not supposed to be sitting here trying to tell people how you feel. You're not supposed to be telling people, oh, I, oh, I was just so sad. All that garbage trying to pretend as you're trying to pretend as if it's somehow pious. I'm doing this because I'm so hurt. I'm so wounded. The hell you are. You're doing it because you're trying to get some attention. You're trying to get somebody to give you some sympathy so that you can feel as if you got somebody paying attention to you. That's the only reason that it's done. It's blatantly obvious. That's what it is. And it's you're being told, knock it off. That's the reason why we're highlighting the stupidity of Christian Cooper. Oh, he thought that he was going to get some white supremacist attention if he ran out there putting on the cape for the very white woman who tried to set him up to be murdered. And instead, what happened was they didn't give him a pat on the head. Nobody said, you a good boy. Why, I doubt that he even got one extra kiss down at the local Blue Oyster Bar. No, the only thing that he got was slapped in the face, and he deserves it, but the problem is this is being used, he's being used as a proxy for all black people, not just black men, but black women, black children, you name it. This idiot allowed himself to be successfully used as nothing more than a talking point for white supremacists to say that all these anti-black attacks, black folks don't mind being targeted. Why, look at Christian Cooper. Why, he knew that he was wrong. Why, these Negroes, they know that white supremacists are not racist. He knows that. That's the reason why he said he was uncomfortable with her losing her job. That's an admission of guilt. He knew that he was wrong. Why? It's, he was the one who was intimidating her. He was the one who was threatening her, and he knows he was wrong. And that's the reason why he said she shouldn't be punished, because he knew he was guilty. That nigger was guilty, and he knew it. And here she is running with that exact same narrative. That's what she's appealing to. And everybody understands that's what she's saying. Trying to get sympathy from these white supremacists. Trying to pretend as if you're, oh, I'm going to put on this little show and I'm going to use the lie that I'm being pious. But <laughs> what I really want is for these white supremacists to give me a pat on the head. And, and I just want some attention from them. I just want them to acknowledge that I exist. Christian Cooper does it. And the idiots who every time there's an anti-black race attack that occurs, they try to say, I'm so sad and I'm hurt and it hurts my heart to see this and I'm just crying and oh, how sad and this just tears me up. We got a lot of Negroes out there who are trying to do whatever they can to get some white supremacist or someone from the dominant society to pat them on the head. And this is suicidal and it is a threat to all of us. But that's not the only angle of attack the white supremacy is attempting to push. The white media being the propaganda arm of white supremacy, they understand the need to make sure that they got to keep the lies rolling in. I posted for you on my Twitter feed how you, everyone remembers or should remember the late great Sam Greenlee's classic, The Spook Who Sat By The Door. Not just the novel, but also the movie that he funded. He raised the money to get that movie made back in the late 60s, I believe it was. And you had no less than the FBI who ran around confiscating every copy of it that they could find. They were so threatened by it. This is the power of black media. You had a black man who most folks hadn't heard of, whose novel most folks hadn't read, and whose movie only had a very, very limited release, but the FBI was like, the fact that this is out there at all has to be stopped. 
So they ran around confiscating it from every movie theater that they could. And the only reason that a single copy of, or two of it survived was because when Greenlee and his friends found out what was that the pinch was coming down, they decided to write the name of another movie on the film reel can that it was in. And that got them by the FBI. So this idea of the FBI are somehow some sort of supermen who can see through walls and read minds. Man, all you got to do is put a different label on there, like, like some sort of bad Charlie Chaplin comedy. These white supremacists are not the superhumans that we keep making them out to be. Sam Greenlee understood that. And J. Edgar Hoover and the white supremacists then and now, they understand it too. But Sam Greenlee's novel is now going to be desecrated by Disney, no less, the same Walt Disney Company founded by a man who said that no black person would work for him as long as he was alive. Walt Disney was a virulent, feculent, anti-black zealot. So it only makes sense that the Disney Company is going to call themselves making a spook who sat by the door TV series. Now, the lead for this show is a guy named Yelan Noel, or however the hell his name is pr pronounced. Some of you might remember the name because he was in Issa Rae's vomitous little sideshow, Insecure. I guess they figured, heck, if he's going to do that kind of show, he'll fit right in on this one. And you won't be surprised to learn that no less than Lee Daniels himself is going to be executive producing this show. So what that means is when black folks are raising hell about this, just like he did for his movie Precious, and in every other instance where white supremacies needed some Negro to be their crash dummy, get ready to see Lee Daniels come out of hiding wherever the hell he's been at, and he'll come slithering out of his hole or someone else's in order to protect and defend and run interference for this. Oh yeah, as far as white supremacy is concerned, they had no interest in Sam Greenlee at all. That is, until they thought they saw an opportunity to be able to take his work and slander it and lampoon it and desecrate it. And it's no accident that the Disney Corporation has waited until this moment to pull this stunt. They could have done this any time in the last few years. They've owned Fox's TV holdings for a while. They've owned, they've had FX in their pocket for a while. Why not do it before now? Because of what happened last year. The black grassroots are on the march. So this is the white media doing counter programming. That's what this is going to be about. This is going to be white supremacist counter programming. Trying to feed you poison in a candy coating. Oh, you niggers, you remember the spook who sat by the door, right? You guys remember that? We're going to do a TV show about it. Except it's going to be a TV show that lets you niggers know how it should have gone. See, this is the reason why it's not enough to simply have a TV program or a movie that is produced or written by or directed by a black person or has black people in front of the camera you see, as long as the white media controls the money behind these productions, it's not a black production. I think it's time for a quick refresher on B1 lexicology. Why do I call it the white media? I was one of the first people to insist on that phrasing, not media, but white media. Now, why did I insist on that? Why was it so important to me to identify them as the white media? Why did I do that? The reason why is, as I explained, media, any media, is defined by who owns it, who controls it, and whose interests they operate in. Who controls the Disney Corporation as a media entity? Who owns it? Who owns it are a bunch of white, mostly mega-millionaire investors. That's who owns it. Who controls it? Who runs it? People like Bob Iger, who is stepping down soon, and apparently some guy named Bob Chapek is going to be the heir apparent. But a bunch of white people are the ones who run it. And whose interests do they operate in? Well, if you can answer the first two, you already can guess what the third one is. One thing's for sure, the Disney company does not operate in the interests of black people. A media outlet is defined by who bankrolls it, 
They are defined by who it is who's actually running their day-to-day operations and whose interests they operate in. Bill Moyer said that the news, if you want to know what the definition of the news is, the news is the information you need in order to keep your freedoms. But as we always understand, under white supremacy, when they say freedom, what they're actually talking about is their power. So to use the practical definition of the news as defined under white supremacy, the news is whatever information white supremacy needs or the white, the dominant society requires in order to keep their power. You know what? I can understand that. See, that's why we call ourselves the black media. Who is it who funds what we do? Who's the money behind what we do? For going on almost 15 years now, who's been who's been responsible for making sure that we have our independence? We have been self-funded. And that's the reason why we're also the ones who are doing the talking. There is nobody who can make me say a damn word that I don't want to say. And whose interests do we operate in? We operate in your interests. I have no problem with the dominant society having a media that operates in their interests so long as we have one of equal, if not greater power, operating in ours. Problem is, the white media makes it their point, their mission, that they're going to make sure that they have the only voice and they will be actively working in conjunction with the legal authorities in order to make sure we have no voice. So if you get a Sam Greenlee out there writing a novel that gives the white supremacist heartburn, and then he goes to the next step and decides, I'm going to have a living and living color and living sound representation of this vision on the big screen, white supremacy looked and said, we got to stop this guy. See, it wasn't the Motion Picture Association of America who tried to shut Sam Greenlee down. They certainly didn't object to it. It was the FBI who came in and did it. And you didn't have any of those white liberals in Hollywood back in the late 60s or early 70s who even said boo about it. What does that tell you? See, it wasn't white people who revived and found and restored and brought the spook who sat by the door back to popular consciousness. It was black people who did that. That's why you need a black media. Nobody is going to fund or bankroll a media for you except you. The media is your voice, and if black people have a voice, we've already shown that all we need is just a little voice, and it can counter even the huge voices of the white media. So what do you think they're thinking about? What they're thinking is, we need to counter-program and counter-program hard. We're going to take some of these cultural touchstones these niggers have, and if it's anything that we might have a copyright on, or anything that we might have the rights to, we're going to do our own bastardized version of it until the black people hear your voice. Yeah, all you niggers out there in the streets, you're talking about revolution and overthrowing white supremacy. Well, we're going to do this as giving you guys the middle finger. That's what this is about. I mean, what the hell else could it be? It's got freaking Lee Daniels' name attached to it. That's certified suck right there. In his case, no pun intended. But that's the thing I need my people to understand when it comes to the white media. These men, they don't, the guys who run the white media, they don't see themselves as being in the business of entertainment. They see themselves as being in the business of mind control. Their job is social engineering through lying images and fraudulent narratives. And one of their favorite narratives being the big bad black man. See how that dovetails with the Amy Coopers? That's the reason why you don't have the white media out here deciding we're going to dig up every bit of dirt about her there is. Anybody who's ever had anything disparaging to say about her, we're going to bring that to light. Because you know that this woman's crazy as a rat in a tent outhouse. We need to make sure everybody knows just how crazy this woman is. Nope, they're not doing that at all. See, if it was a, if it had been Christian Cooper who had been killed that day, then the white media would be doing everything that they could to slander him. Because they want to make sure it's understood there's no such thing as a black victim of white supremacy. These are just black people who got what they had coming, or otherwise, well, they brought it on themselves, or at the very least, you know, this is an isolated incident. The innocent white supremacist female, that lie, that myth, must be protected at all costs because this is the rationale by which we try to justify the killings of black people. One of the many rationales. So we got a number of offensives coming at us. 
This evening I was planning originally to go ahead and do a little video shanking of Val Demings, you know, America's favorite ex-police chief. The bootlick class of 2021. I'll probably do that one on Sunday. But for now, family, let's make sure we start getting on code. Let's start getting coded up. Anytime some Negro calls themselves trying to throw black people under the bus so they can get a pat on the head, or they're so desperate for some sympathy from white supremacy, either sympathy or sympathy by proxy. I mean, is there some sort of racial... We got a lot of black folks who suffer from the racial equivalence of Munchausen by proxy syndrome. You guys are familiar with that. Usually it's mothers who abuse or otherwise they'll, they will poison their children or sicken their children as a way to get attention from other people. Oh, look at how sick my child is. You guys should give me some sympathy. I am the long-suffering mother whose child is sick when they're the ones who are poisoning the child or suffocating the child or otherwise malnourishing them just so they can get attention. We got a lot of black folks who do the exact same thing when it comes to race attacks against us. They want sympathy from the dominant society. Oh, look, look what happened to, to one of my fellow black people. Another black person has been harmed. And look, you guys should feel sorry for me because this black person got harmed or threatened or killed. We're not going to be humoring that crap. And the Lee Daniels and the others who keep persisting and being the crash dummy of choice, being the front Negro of choice, we're not going to be humoring that mess. We're going to be calling that mess out. And as we get stronger, we're going to be putting ourselves in a position where we're able to cut off and punish the Lee Daniels. When Dame Dash stepped to him, Lee Daniels didn't have the white media backing him up. All of his white producer buddies and his the folk who he thinks that he's mobbed up with in the white media, when Dame Dash stepped to him, it wasn't nobody but him and Dame Dash on that stage. Oh yeah, there was no FX executives there. No Disney executives there. No Oprah Winfrey or any other bootlicks there. Yeah, these suck-ups to white supremacy, these Negroes who spend their days polishing masses boots with their tongues... They understand that when push comes to shove, when the black, whenever some black folks who are really about it decide that it's time to confront them, it's time to step to them, they understand they're going to be out there by themselves. And no amount of white supremacist butt kissing or boot licking or anything else that they do is going to change that reality. Yeah, the Stacey Dashes and the Lee Daniels and the Christian Coopers. When they get hung out to dry, they won't learn anything from it. But they do know they're going to be out there by themselves. But when you got somebody who is more dedicated to kissing the behinds of the white supremacists than they are to their own survival, that is somebody who it's dangerous to have anywhere near us. That is somebody who is so degenerate in their mentality, if they don't value their own life, what the hell makes you think they're going to value yours? So we got to start cracking down on and getting serious about putting the elbow on these fools who are sitting here trying to throw all of us under the bus, who are trying to set all of us up. Because I can tell you right now, if Christian Cooper had been standing there and it had been some other black man who told Amy Cooper to obey the law and if she had killed him or the police came and killed him, Christian Cooper would be saying the exact same things. He'd be saying, you know what? I don't think it was about race at all. I think that she's just misunderstood. I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, just because this white woman killed this black man right in front of me, I, I, I'm uncomfortable that she should lose her job or that people are throwing all of these insults at her. I'm, I'm uncomfortable about that. I think we should lay off of her. I think she's been through enough. She killed a black man or caused a black man to be killed. I think she's been through enough. Don't you know that idiot would be doing the exact same thing? And Lee Daniels would be right out there with him. You just make sure you get your mind right and don't make the mistake of being out there with them either, physically or online.